Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report presented by Only One Nation. Go to onlyonenation60.com and use code FCOVID at purchase because then you're going to be able to get a free mask like I got right now, but you got to buy a hat, a tank, or a shirt to get that deal. Raiders news and rumors coming up right now. All right, Foster Moreau on the pup list. This one is from ESPN's uh, Paul Gutierrez. I'm going to give it only one chucky head, and I think it's a small shred of truth. So I was going through the internet, and I'm looking around, and I see that Gutierrez comes out with his 53-man roster projection, and there was one name that I noticed wasn't on it. It was Foster Moreau, and I was like, wait a minute. All right, got to dig into this a little bit deeper. He basically goes on to say that the reason why he doesn't have Foster as one of his three final tight ends is because – you could see the Raiders potentially put him at the pup list. And he goes on to detail to say that when Moreau tore his ACL back in week 14 last season, it was obviously a big red flag. Now with all the speculation and not fully understanding where players are due to COVID, you could see the Raiders potentially move Foss Moreau to the pup list. My other question to that was, really, only three tight ends? I was kind of mind blown by that because John Gruden has said multiple times that they're going to run three tight end sets. So you're going to run three tight end sets and only have three tight ends on your roster? Yeah, come on. One chalky head. So how many tight ends will the Raiders keep? If you guys are a loyal watcher to the show, you'll know what to do here. Scroll on down and let me know how many tight ends will the Raiders keep this upcoming season. So for me, I think Voss Moreau is going to make the team. And if he's healthy, he's going to be a player that you will see definitely impact the scoreboard. Five touchdowns last season as a rookie. Did get banged up but did see seven red zone targets. So look for the young rookie to learn behind a guy like Jason Witten. And yes, he's going to get a lot of snaps. Yes, he's going to get a lot of playing time, but he will be the backup to Darren Waller. And here's ESPN's projected tight end depth chart. This one was according to Gutierrez. So if it goes according to his 53-man roster projection, you have Waller, you have Witten, then they're going to end up keeping Derek Carrier at $1.75 million. You place Foss Moreau on the pup list to help you potentially keep another player on defense, but then you also cut Paul Butler and you cut Nick Bowers, the UDFA. So here we're doing a lot of Chucky heads, and if you don't know what Chucky heads mean, hey, maybe you should subscribe and watch some more shows. So the next rumor here, cutting Nicholas Morrow. This one to me is two Chucky heads, and people are talking, and I can understand that a lot of people that watch this show today are going to be like, really? You're going to cut Foster Moreau? The guy had 68 tackles last year. Nicholas Moreau, my bad. Hey, he had 68 tackles last year, Mitch. Well, this one again is from Paul Gutierrez, and I'm taking a you know page out of his book where he ends up cutting Moreau, and I was kind of shocked by that because the Raiders, they did place a second-round tender on him, but if you want to save $3.2 million, that is a potential where you could do that. The issue here with Moreau is like, he stepped up last year for the team, and I get that a lot of people fell in love with him. However, he is really not that good. The one reason why I thought that you could see the Raiders keep him is simply because he played last year and he does have a little bit of experience. So when you looked at what he did last year, also the player that they ended up keeping is Markel Lee. The reason why Markel Lee didn't play a lot last season was because he did get banged up a little bit. So here's ESPN's projected linebacking depth chart. They had Corey Littleton, they had Nick Kukowski, Tanner Muse. they're going to slot in there at the strong side linebacker, which I would be totally hyped for. You're going to see them keep Kyle Wilbur, which I actually do agree with this one because of his relationship with Rich Basachi as a special teams coach, who we also worked with with the Dallas Cowboys, and then Markel Lee, and then a very interesting name down there at Javen White. So you got Nicholas Morrow, you have a lot of other talented players now finally at the linebacker position, but are they going to cut him? This one's two chucky heads. It wouldn't surprise me if they did. It also wouldn't surprise me if they didn't. This promo code caught me by surprise. So shout out to the guys at Only One Nations. And if you want a free face mask, as you can see, I've got mine. All you got to do to do that is you got to buy a hat, a tank, or a t-shirt at OnlyOneNation60.com. The t-shirts that you're going to be able to get there, um, unbelievably comfortable. You're not going to be able to see if you're sweating either but you can save 20% and get a free mask by using the code FCOVID. So shout out to those guys. Very, very creative. Go support our sponsors here. I'll put it in the comments. It'll also be in the description, FCOVID. All right, next rumor here on the Raiders Report. 
the Las Vegas Raiders are going to keep UDFA Javen White. Two chalky heads and people are talking. This one, again, is from ESPN's Paul Gutierrez, and I really wanted to take a deep dive on it because there hasn't really been too much discussion about the Raiders keeping White, and the fact that Gutierrez thinks that they're going to do it, it at least caught my attention. So what is the one thing that the Raiders did in the draft and in free agency, especially on defense? They look for versatile players. White is pretty versatile. He can kind of play linebacker, some safety. I would say look at him as a lesser version of a Tanner Muse, if you will. Pretty solid speed. But I really think that maybe he knows something, and I maybe the Raiders have been able to watch him because he did go to school at UNLV, and I know that he's been working with a lot of Raiders players in general. So the young 23-year-old who had 79 tackles last season at UNLV, could he potentially be making the team? I'm going to give this one two chucky heads and people are talking. So if you had to keep one linebacker, who would you do it? That sounded weird. Who would you end up keeping? Nicholas Morrow, I want you to type NM. Or would you go with the UDFA Javen White? I want you to type JW. If you want to know what I think, you guys can always hit me up on IG at MitchellRens365. So if you like talking Raiders, if you like watching the Raiders, if you consider yourself a Raider fan, then subscribe to the Las Vegas Raiders Report. It's 100% free. We do live shows every Tuesday. We do daily videos. I'm telling you what right now, you're not going to find another YouTube channel that's going to keep you as up to date and has as good of a time as what we do here. So hit that sub button and tell your friends to also subscribe. My last three rumors here on today's show was losing the LA bid, the best thing that's ever happened to the Raiders. This rumor is from Mark Davis, and I'm going to give it three Chucky heads, and I think it's pretty likely. I would like to be able to give it four, but until I see what exactly happens with Las Vegas, I'm going to give it three. So Mark Davis was basically asked, you know, hey, Mark, what do you think about not getting the bid in L.A.? As you can see at the very bottom, he says losing the L.A. vote was probably the best thing that ever happened. So what is he exactly referring to? So if you remember, the Raiders had proposed a new stadium in Carson, California, and they were going to share it with the Chargers. Instead, the Rams ended up winning that bid, and now it's going to be the Chargers and the Rams in Los Angeles. The other reason why I do agree with Mark Davis here, there's a lot of L.A. fans in, or there's a lot of Raider fans in L.A. Let's not get it twisted. Los Angeles still belongs to the Raiders. So the way I look at it, you put the Raiders in Las Vegas. We're already seeing the amount of money that's being brought in. And hey, the, the Los Angeles people, they're still going to be rooting for the Raiders. And now we're getting a whole other city. So do I agree with Mark Davis? Yes. Yes, I do. So speaking of Las Vegas, I'm going to be in Vegas from July 30th to 31st. And I'm trying to figure out where I should go eat. Where should I maybe go have a drink? If you have any options, please, please, please throw it in the comment section. And if you're in Vegas around that time, you guys know where to hit me up. Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat at this point. I'm at MitchellRens365. So the guy that owns Only One Nation, this is him. This is Rick. So shout out to my man, Rick. As you can see, he's fully taken advantage of his offer F COVID. If you buy a hat, if you buy a tank, if you buy this t-shirt right here, you will get a free face mask. The face masks are $16.99. So not only if you use F COVID are you getting a free mask that is $16.99, you're also saving an additional 20%. So go support our sponsors, get a face mask, rep your Raiders gear, save 20% and F COVID in the process. All right, we're going to keep it moving here. Henry Ruggs, the next Cliff Branch. It's, it's tough to do. I, I love me some Cliff Branch. Rest in peace, everyone. Please type RIP. I'm going to give it two chalky heads and people are talking. This one is again from Mark Davis. And the reason why I'm going to give it to Chucky Heads is Davis compares him to Cliff Branch because of the speed, which you can't deny Henry Ruggs 100% has the speed. The reason why it's really hard to say that he's going to be the next Cliff Branch is simply because it's hard to be, well, basically a Hall of Fame wide receiver. Can we get Cliff Branch in the Hall of Fame? Davis goes on to say this quote, Henry Ruggs was the player I wanted for the last six months. I wish you would have told me, Mark. My dad was always trying to replace Cliff with so many different types of guys. Speed, speed, speed. And we really got away from that the last five, six, seven years. We really didn't have anybody that could run, <laughs> which, yeah, I don't totally blame you. So when you're trying to be the next Cliff Branch, it's not 100% easy, right? 67 touchdowns, 8,000 yards, but it was really the speed. The reason why I want to say this, just because, let's just say, if Ruggs doesn't have a breakout year as a rookie, it's okay. It's not always easy to have a great year as a rookie. I mean, look at Cliff Branch, what he did as a rookie. It might surprise a lot of you. If you're old enough, if you were born in 1972, 
Shout out to you. But, uh, yeah, you'll probably remember that he had only three catches, 41 yards, and no touchdowns. So do I think that Ruggs has this talent? Yes. Do I think that he has the speed? Yes. Can he live up to Chris Branch? Of course he can. Cliff Branch, of course he can. However, however, let's pump the brakes. It's not always easy to come in right away, but he is going to be our number one wide receiver. He did put up some solid numbers at Alabama. So fingers crossed that he can be the next Cliff Branch. So who would be faster in their prime? My dad is always like the king guy who was like, oh, I ran a 4.4 when I was trying out with the New York Mets. I'm like, all right, dad, ease up a little bit. So who do you think would be faster in their prime? Henry Ruggs, I want you to type HR or type CB for Cliff Branch. Obviously, I've seen Henry Ruggs run 4.2740 yard dash. Unfortunately, I never got to watch Cliff in his prime. So I want some of you older Raider fans to let me know. HR for Henry Ruggs or CB for Cliff Branch. The last rumor here on today's show, all the Raiders rookies will be signed by July 28th. I'm going to give this one three Chucky heads. It's pretty likely. I want to be able to give it four Chucky heads. The only way that this isn't for Chucky heads is if one of the rookies tests positive for Corona. So what we saw on Tuesday, rookies, they went into the camp. Yeah, they went into the facility in Henderson. They got tested. They were sent home for three days. Then on Friday, they showed back up. You're going to get another test. If that test comes back negative again, then you will see them start to sign. Now, Henry Ruggs is the only Raiders rookie that's already signed. They made him a priority. They gave him four years, $16.67 million. So now you have the next three guys, Arnett, Lynn Bowden Jr., Brian Edwards, and don't be surprised if they do it in priority, Tanner Muse, John Simpson, and Meek Robertson. If all six of those players have two straight negative tests, and I just saw this pop up, Derek Carr, also two straight negative tests, so he'll be there. You're going to see these rookies sign. So if bearing some crazy thing happening, you're going to see all the rookies sign. If you haven't already subscribed yet, hit that sub button and let me know and my boss, James, where we should go in Las Vegas. July 30th and 31st in the comments section. Raider Nation, what's going on? Is this the number one Raiders channel on YouTube? For Chucky Heads, believe it, baby. And if you haven't already, subscribe right here. I'm giving you Chucky Heads news, rumors, Raider Nation rumors. And look at this, I'm making your life easier. Check out my next video. Thanks for watching and go Raiders.